And number 10, let's look at gambling and alcohol. So of course, gambling and alcohol are some of the biggest, most serious sins in the religion of Islam. Muslims are not permitted at all to consume alcohol. And it's written in the Quran, and I quote, O believers, intoxicants, gambling, idols, and drawing lots for decisions are all evil of Satan's handiwork. So shun them so you may be successful. And that's taken from Surah 5 verses 90. Also, Ibn Umar reported that Prophet Muhammad said this, Every intoxicant is Khaimar and every intoxicant is forbidden. He who drinks wine in this world and dies while he is addicted to it, not having repented, will not be given a drink in the hereafter. And that's found in Sahih Muslim number 92. Next up, hurting yourself is also completely haram. Hurting yourself, like hitting your face or chest for grief, or things like that, or hitting another person, such as your child, or another brother or sister, is strictly prohibited. It is stated in the Quran that killing does not mean just taking life, but it also means hurting oneself or hurting anyone else in any way. It's mentioned in the Quran, believers do not devour one another's possessions wrongfully, Rather than that, let there be trading by mutual consent. You shall not kill yourself. Surely Allah is ever compassionate to you. And that's taken from Surah 4 verses 29. So obviously, killing yourself in this context is not necessarily that. Next up, number eight, interest. Riba or interest is not allowed in Islam because it is a system that makes poor people poorer and rich people richer. Narrated by Abdullah ibn Hanzala, the Prophet Muhammad said this, The dirham of riba which a man receives knowingly is worse than committing adultery 36 times. Wow. Okay. Bayhaqi also had reported the hadith that I just mentioned in Suhab al-Iman and he added an additional statement that says, Hell befits him whose flesh has been nourished by the unlawful. Whoa. Also, another surprising one, silk and gold on men. Islam actually forbids two types of adornment for men while allowing them for women. The first type is gold ornaments, and the second is pure silk clothing. According to Ali, the Prophet Muhammad took silk in his right hand and some gold in his left hand and declared this, these two are haram for the males among my followers. So the prohibition of gold applies to gold rings and gold pens even, gold watches, gold cigarette cases and lighters, gold teeth, you know sometimes guys have gold teeth in their mouth, and so on and so forth. The strictly haram thing at number six is intimate acts with yourself. Doing this for both men and women is completely haram in Islam. According to Al-Imam Shafi'i, the following verse from the Quran forbids these acts. And who guard their modesty save from their wives or slaves that their right hand possesses? For then they are not blameworthy. But whoso craveth beyond that, such are transgressors. And that passage is found in Surah 23 verses 5 to 7 of the Quran. Now, these verses are clear in prohibiting all illegal intimate acts, including those done with oneself, except for wives or what their right hand possesses. Anyone who goes beyond those parameters becomes a transgressor or a sinner. Moving on now to number five. Let's talk about apparel, like clothing and jewelry. There's a whole lot here to unpack. Both gold adornments as well as silk clothes are forbidden for men to wear in Islam, but they're actually permitted for women, but only as long as they are not used to sexually attract men that are not their husband. The prohibition of these adornments are part of a broader Islamic principle of abstaining from lavish, excessive lifestyles. Clothing that does not properly cover the body and clothing that is transparent are both considered haram for both men and women. And furthermore, Islam forbids excessive beautification, which includes altering one's physical appearance with things like tattoos, tooth shortening and tooth filing and all of that stuff, as well as cosmetic surgery and the list goes on. Also, did you know that hunting during pilgrimage is haram? Yes, it is completely forbidden 
forbidden to hunt while performing a pilgrimage. As a matter of fact, there's a passage in the Quran that goes like this. Believers, rejoice. Complete your indentures, except for what is announced to you here. The beast of the cattle is made lawful for you for food while the game is prohibited when you are on pilgrimage. Lo, God ordains whatever pleases him. And that reference is from the Quran, Surah 5, verses 1. Number three leads us to the haram thing involving carrion. Carrion is an animal that is not slaughtered in the name of Allah, but instead passes away by itself, and it is also prohibited in Islam. Forbidden to you is that which dies of itself, and blood and flesh of swine, and that on which any other name than that of Allah has been invoked, and the strangled animal, and that beaten to death, and that killed by a fall, and that killed by being smitten with the horn, and that which wild beasts have eaten, except what you slaughter. And that reference is in the Quran, Surah 5, verses 3. The haram thing at number two is intoxicants. Alcoholic drinks are generally prohibited completely in Islam, with the Quran including several verses that rebuke the consumption of khamer, which is an Arabic term meaning intoxicants that are interpreted to include most forms of alcohol and psychoactive drugs. The Quran says, they question you about intoxicants and games of chance. Both have great sin and some utility for men, but their sin outweighs their utility. And they ask you what they ought to spend. That which is superfluous, thus God reveals his revelations to you so that you may reflect. And that reference is from the Quran, Surah 2, verses 219. Ending this episode off at number one, shirk. Okay, so the biggest haram thing in Islam is attributing the features of Allah to anyone or anything else. The Quran stresses in many verses that God does not share his powers with any partner. It warns those who believe their idols will intercede for them that they, together with the idols, will become fuel for hellfire on the day of judgment. And that's taken from the Quran, Surah 21, verses 98. As well as the great majority of the polytheists, those who worship multiple gods in the Prophet Muhammad's time, were those who had never become Muslims. Thus, the words of the Quran were not addressed to Muslims, but rather they were addressed to non-Muslim Arabs. But yeah, associating any sort of attributes to other than Allah, completely restricted and forbidden and haram according to the religion of Islam. Well, let's just jump right in. Starting at number 10, we have mistreating your wife. So mistreating your spouse is one of the biggest sins and it's considered haram in Islam. Now the Prophet Muhammad, he taught people that they need to be very friendly and kind to their wives. According to Muslim belief, Prophet Muhammad even stated that you need to try to make your spouse your best friend. In a hadith narrated by al Ternudi, it says, the Prophet said, the best of you are those who are the best to their wives and I am the best of you to my wives. The next thing considered haram in Islam is tattoos. Now there's a hadith that says this, may Allah curse the women who do tattoos and those from whom tattoos are done, those who pluck their eyebrows and those who file their teeth for the purpose of beautification and alter the creation of Allah. Specifically that's found in Al-Bukhari Al-Libis number 5587. Charging interest is at number 8 and the term riba refers to interest and this is something that is completely haram in Islam largely due to the fact that it makes poor people even poorer so like if you owe money and you're charged interest in the end you end up poor because you end up spending more money than you actually owed now in the hadith from Abdullah in Hamzala this is what is recorded that the Prophet Muhammad had said the Prophet said a dirham or riba which a man receives knowingly is worse than committing adultery 36 times. And you know, debt payments is what kills a lot of people because if you owe $20,000, with interest, you probably owe closer to $25,000, $30,000 in some cases. Next time I gotta pay off a car loan or something, I'm gonna tell them, listen man, 
you're charging interest on that, that's haram. Adultery and fornication come in at number seven. Now there's a passage in the Quran, Surah 17 verses 32 that says this, and do not approach unlawful sexual intercourse. Indeed, it is ever an immorality and is evil as a way. So of course, having relations outside of your marriage, as well as having intimate relations, not being married, that's haram. Drinking alcohol is another big haram thing in Islam and it's found in the Quran, Surah 5, verses 90. There's a passage that says this, O you who have believed indeed intoxicants, gambling, sacrifices on stone altars to other than Allah and divining arrows are but defilement from the work of Satan. So avoid it that you may also be successful. In at the number five spot, let's talk about weapon sales. Dealing in weapons and arms, including production and distribution, distribution is considered haram in the religion as it is contributing to violence and the destruction of property as well as the destruction and loss of lives. So this includes working as an arms dealer, manufacturing weapons, or participating in the management of a military or defense contractor. There's definitely some gray areas there because of the whole self-defense thing, but either way, being involved in that industry just for the sake of being involved in the industry to make some money, haram. Next up, we have animal testing. Islam considers this abuse and mistreatment of animals, and it is haram to be in a business that involves animal testing for cosmetic or other productions. And yeah, this is completely frowned upon. So yeah, if you're working as a laboratory technician with animal testing facilities or participating in the management of a company that engages in animal testing, well, if you're a Muslim, it is strictly haram. Coming in at the number three spot, adult content. So the production and distribution and consumption of X-rated materials is considered haram in the religion of Islam. And Islam views it as contributing to immorality in society. So of course, you know, participating in the adult entertainment industry or participating in the management of a company that produces and distributes graphic materials. Yeah completely haram. Number two is a pretty surprising one, tobacco production and sales. So the production and sales of tobacco products are considered haram in the religion, which I didn't really know because it's pretty commonplace for Muslims to smoke. So I found it pretty interesting that the religion of Islam views this as actual self-harm as well as harm to others. So if you work as a tobacco farmer or participating in the distribution in some way of tobacco, yeah, you're inflicting harm to somebody. And if you obviously are a user, you're inflicting harm to yourself. Interesting. And in the number one spot, we have fraud and deceit. Any business or job that involves deception, fraud, or exploitation is considered haram, and it goes against the principles of being honest and being just in society. So things like pyramid schemes and other scams, working as a con artist, participating in insider trading or market manipulation, or also management of a company or business that engages in fraudulent practices, that is completely off the limit it's, it is haram. Now, now, one thing to know about this though is that network marketing is often seen as fraudulent, but they are not necessarily in the same category if you work at a network marketing company or you own a network marketing company. Now, one thing to note though is that network marketing is often seen as something that is fraudulent, but they're not necessarily in the same category, you know running a multi-level marketing or network marketing company or working in one, it's not necessarily haram. It's a different category because they do offer legitimate compensation for the sales of products and services. And someone can actually build a legitimate business through network marketing. It, however, may take a lot of work and time and effort, and it's often presented as something that is very quick and easy, not necessarily the case, but oftentimes people view them as scams because they have to put in a lot more time and effort than they initially thought. But it's perfectly fine for Muslims to participate in multi-level marketing or network marketing as long as the business does not produce or sell or endorse anything that is considered haram in Islam. 